Hi there, this is Alana. Welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. Thank you for joining us today. I am here with my co-host, Jamie, and we're going to be talking about some of the spiritual benefits of prayer journaling and a topic that I really, really love and get excited about and how prayer journaling can really deepen your walk with God. So before we dive in, let's open with a word of prayer. God, we just thank you for this time to be able to talk about prayer journaling and to come to you and invite you into our thoughts about prayer journaling. We just ask that you would guide this discussion and just help us to become better at strengthening our relationship with you through journaling. And we just um, pray that you'd be glorified in this time. Amen. Amen. And our just for fun question is, what is the most embarrassing thing you've written in a journal? Well, I'm not going to say it on air, like in Aww, front of however many people. Please. No. Okay. All right. All right. So I can't think of one specific embarrassing thing. There've been all mm-hmm. kinds. But um, I have written down confessions that I would not want anyone to know about. Right. Um, and then one time, this is kind of sad. It's not very lighthearted and just for fun, but I was really mad at my mom and mm-hmm. <laughs> I wrote how angry I was at her. And I, I wrote a lot of things in my journal and I really hope she never found it. I ended up oh, throwing wow. that journal away. Cause I, I reread my journals when I was younger and I was like, I don't ever want her to see this. And I read mm. a few other things and thought, I don't want anyone to ever hear this either. So I, I threw out a few of my journals, but yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much um, after that, I sort of shifted my journaling to be a little bit more vague uh-huh. in case, um, yeah. which we're going to talk a little bit, I think, about that in, in this series of journaling videos so and journaling um, podcast episodes, just kind of how to deal with that because it is kind of, you don't want people to read embarrassing stuff. Yeah. I've showed you, Jamie, but what I do when I'm writing something that I don't want other people to ever read, like my confessions, I will, um, first I'll write really, really sloppily. Yes. And then I'll just write, I'll use the same line three or four times. <laughs> and so by the end, it's like one line of almost solid ink. Yeah. It <laughs> looks like pig pen like from that. peanuts it walked is, yeah. across the line <laughs> of each. It's like just swirly, like yeah. you can't even read it. I think it's, it's ingenious. My, one of my kids asked me the other day, he's like, mom, I'm going to read your journal. So I'm like, yeah, sure. I opened up a page. I'm like, go ahead tell me what it says. I'm like, what? What is this? <laughs> is that my name I see there in the yeah. smoke? <laughs> well, I do have another embarrassing journal story, though. It's embarrassing and funny, so I'll, I'll go ahead and turn it back to the lighthearted. So, That's good. Yeah. Uh, Scott and I were newlyweds. We had a rough first year marriage. We had, um, well, one miscarriage, and then I got pregnant. So basically, in our first year of marriage, I was like, I had two first trimesters, And it was not easy on my brain, body, or emotions, or our marriage. And you also, you know this, and maybe people who have listened long enough know my husband and I joke a ton. So even though, yes, it was a hard year, like we still very much joked and laughed a lot. And at one point, he said something like, why don't you like me very much? And I said, well, what makes you think that? And he said, I read it in your journal. Okay, so you have to know Scott. This is totally joking. Like, he's just being Scott and being funny. And I said, oh, well, I was kind of mad that day. I just wasn't in a good place. Oops. (laughs) Yeah, oops. (laughs) But, yeah, we had a good laugh about it. So that's the most embarrassing thing that you – well, yeah, that is the most embarrassing that you did write. That Well, that ever got found out. I mean, all my really embarrassing stuff, it's totally indecipherable. Now, I do wonder, like, you hear about, um, you know, like, could a forensics expert, if they had to, like, could they x-ray the layers of my ink? And so I do wonder if someone could one day decipher, but thankfully, it's not anything that would get me in legal trouble. (laughs) It would just be (laughs) quite embarrassing. embarrassing. (laughs) Yeah. By the time that technology is, is, like perfected, those people won't, won't really matter. They won't be on the planet anymore. Yeah. Well, and Scott was telling me, I guess there's this kind of journal now that like you put it in the microwave and the ink disappears. What? It's like a reusable journal, you know? That's so cool. 
<laughs> that is like secondary to, because the other, you know, the other journaling thing you can do is just, you know, type out a Word document and then not save it. Yeah, and delete it or something. Somewhere in the archives, it there might, might be exist. some metadata, but I don't think uh-huh. anyone is going to be able to find that. But that's, that's pretty neat. I would like to learn that weird? about that. Mm-hmm. All right. So career journaling. <laughs> yes. I told you I was going to bring it back to the lighthearted. Yes. All right. So let's talk about some of the spiritual benefits of keeping a prayer journal because it's not for everybody. And some people, if you're like me, you might do it sometimes and not other times, which is totally fine too. But for people who are doing it, whether that's completely like daily and regularly, or just, you know, kind of on a, as you think about it basis, what are some of the first benefits that come to your mind of keeping a prayer journal? For me, it helps me to kind of track where I am and where I've Mm -hmm. been because I really love being able to go back and read things from the past that I've written. Oh, that's funny. I don't like rereading. That's one reason why I just, I like the act of writing and then I'm ready to not have any indication that I ever wrote it. <laughs> well, for scribble. certain things, for certain things. Like there are certain things that I read and I just think, wow, that was, you know, that was a profound understanding for a college student and other things yeah, I'll cool. look at and I'll think that's really dumb. Like how could you have ever thought that? Like with this life experience I have now, like right. you're so silly, but I can track my spiritual progress or sometimes lack thereof. Mm-hmm. Like it's, the, it's oh, a little okay. depressing when I go back, I guess. And I see the same struggles surf, surfacing, you know, from, from year to year. And it's not that I go and read my journals all the time or that I even have like hundreds of them. I just have a few over the years and I journal on and off. But, um, but it, I think it is kind of a neat way to track your spiritual growth or pinpoint areas that you thought were new struggles that you've struggled with for a long time in different ways and just gain insight into how to pray better for yourself and for your prayer life or for other people in your life. Yeah, that's neat. You know, it can definitely be encouraging to see, you know, if you were to keep a list of answered prayers or if you were to go back and read, you know, wow, I was praying for this person. Don't you have a sweet story about your husband and how he showed up in your prayer journal before you were even dating or something like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was rereading some journals. And so my husband and I started out as friends and we were both dating other people and I was engaged to someone else at one point. And we were just, we knew each other through the, um, Christian fellowship group at our college and he was a neighbor. And so, you know, we kind of had the same circle of friends, but so I, I was reading a prayer journal entry and I was praying for him and it was before, um, and I may have even prayed for his girlfriend too, you know, because we were friends and, you know, so it was just a really interesting, like going back and revisiting what it was like to be that person before I knew him in the way that I know him now, you know, it was a neat reminder of our friendship and of how God brought him into our life, you know, or brought him into my life. And, um, yeah, that was just, it's kind of a neat bonus. And sometimes I've actually gone back and like written in the margins with, and put a date Uh, down when I reread and and I realize that it's an answered prayer. I've written like, prayer answered such and such. And I'll put a little date there. And, um, I did that a lot in, in college. And then in my early years before having kids, when I did journal Mm -hmm. more and Mm -hmm. I would like to get back to doing it more, uh, faithfully. Although like you've said before, when we've talked, you know, your journaling isn't going to look the same at every season of your life. So it's dangerous to try and think, I want to journal just like I did when I was a single person with no children, right. and no job. I was a student, you know, mm-hmm. I think it's, it's okay to have seasons of journaling. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And we definitely, we're, we're going to be talking a lot about prayer journaling because we have just launched a prayer journaling course that we'll tell you guys more about in a few minutes, but this isn't to say that if you're not prayer journaling every single day, you're doing something wrong. (laughs) Basically, we just want to give you all kinds of different resources to help you in your prayer life. Like, honestly, I I feel like that's our biggest goal (laughs) out of this entire podcast is just lots and lots of ideas 
for your prayer life. Instead of being prescriptive, you must do this, 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 and that each day in this order for it to, you know, count. <laughs> I like your example of throwing spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks. For mm -hmm. each person, it'll be different pieces of spaghetti. That's a good point. Yeah. And for some people, it might be the meatballs that stick or the sauce or, or what's that song about, the, you know, you sneeze and the, the on meatballs. top of spaghetti, all covered with cheese. <laughs> Can you sing it for us? I can. <laughs> I could, but I won't. All right. It's okay. So um, anyone who wants to hear Jamie sing, we're going to have a special secret link for you. No, I'm joking. Um, back to the, the benefits of prayer journaling and how prayer journaling can help draw you closer to God. I think for me, the biggest benefit, um, long-term benefit that I've seen is just how much prayer journaling helps to keep me focused. We talk about that a lot on this show, how hard it is to stay focused in your prayers because your mind wanders a lot. And we talk a lot about how, yes, we need to show ourselves grace. The goal isn't to have a mind that is perfectly free from wandering. The goal is really just to connect with God. So yes, it is okay for your mind to wander, but anything that we can do that helps us to stay more mentally on track is a good thing. And so that's probably the biggest benefit that I found in my journal is just that when I've got my pen in my hand, when I've got my journal in my hand, it's a lot easier to stay focused. It's a lot harder to get distracted because I'm actually doing something physical. And that's what I, that's what I love about prayer journaling. I would say that's probably maybe even more important for me personally, because I just feel like I'm very easily distracted and just, you know, synapses firing all over the place. And, and so I just, I feel like it anchors your thoughts to write things down. I just mm -hmm. feel like it's yeah. just the act of writing has been, it is, it keeps you focused and uses a different sense. You know, if you're just praying mm -hmm. with your mind, it, it just uses I don't know what sense that is. <laughs> it's just your, a lot of mental focus. I mean, mental you've got to work really hard. But, yeah, but to then stay if on you track. pray out loud, that kind of adds another dimension. But when you're writing, it just it anchors those and it slows you down. That's another thing. That's a good point. Just really slowing you down because we are so fast paced. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing most people out there can either text or type faster than they can prayer journal, like longhand. I actually find that I write so little now that when I write in my journal freehand, I'm, I, I realize how long it's been since I've right. used those muscles. Cause your I don't hand cramps up. And it yeah. really does. So it slows your thoughts down as well. And it, it's just a way to get back to being still or at the very least slowing yourself down. That's such a good point. And you can also like, I don't do this all the time, but I know if there's something that I really want to pray through, like a lot of my prayer journaling these days is doing lists in shorthand. But if it's something that I really want to pray thoroughly about, or, you know, I'm confused about a decision I want to make or something, I'll actually give myself a page count. I'll be like, I'm, I want to write two pages about this you know, and it's kind of just stream of consciousness. And I, I love that. It wasn't one of the ones that I had put down in our notes, but yeah, it does. It slows you down. It helps you to be way more thorough about something. And then the really cool thing, like I've written out prayers before like that, like thorough prayers. And then, Hey, you've got a prayer you can pray, you know? So let's say you write a very thorough prayer for your family. You can pray that prayer every day. You don't have to reinvent it <laughs> every day. You know, that's another, another benefit is you can go back and repray what you had prayed before. Yeah. Or, you know, and even the lists themselves, having a list that you yeah. can go back to and not have to keep straight in your mind is just a really, a very mm -hmm. helpful thing. Very beneficial. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It also helps you with the discipline, you know, like sometimes if you just say, yeah, I want to set a goal to pray more. You know, what's that mean? Does that mean you want to remember to say, dear God, thank you for the food three times a day? Does that mean, you know, but if you have like a, if your goal is I want to write for a page a day in my prayer journal, well, that's really easy to track, <laughs> you know, as opposed to pray more, you know, whatever that, that can mean so many different things. Yeah. 
So it can definitely help you in just, you know, forming good habits, good discipline, all that kind of stuff. I mean, honestly, the benefits of prayer journaling are so endless. <laughs> I'm a big fan, in case you didn't know, which is why we did throw an entire course together. So if you do want more just information, training, inspiration, prayer journal prompts, different ways you can use a prayer journal, you can find that entire online course at prayingchristianwomen.com slash journaling. And I don't know, like we've made quite a few resources now online at Praying Christian Woman. This one might be one of my favorites. Just, I don't know, like I feel like people talk about prayer journaling and, and it's just kind of an aside. Like, oh, and if you want one other way to stay on on track when you pray, try prayer journaling. And that's like, well, what does that mean? Does that mean like your diary? Does that, you know? So I feel like this is a resource that really gets into the like the specifics. We talk about praying through lists. We talk about a more like writing out letters to God. There's just a lot in there because there's, there's so many things you can do with a prayer journal. Yeah. And I, I just love the versatility because again, it can be personalized and you can take things that work for you. Like I, I've mm -hmm. loved recently using sticky notes, which is something that you Mm -hmm. introduced me to Alana where, you know, you can have lists, but they can be, you can use sticky notes so that you're not, you know, you can move them around. You can yeah, it's you know, do different things, but there's so much versatility in prayer journaling mm -hmm. that you can really tailor it to what's best for you. Yeah. So I put a picture on Facebook because I thought it was so funny. I went to the gym. We've been going to the gym lately and I brought my gym bag with me. In my gym bag, it was a Liberty North Korea canvas bag, which is usually the one I carry. This is my gym bag. All right? It had a water bottle, and it had eight different notebooks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I've gotten to where like I have different notebooks for different things, and they're not all prayer journals. Like some of them are just this is the notebook that I I write my fiction ideas in or, or whatever. <laughs> taken to the gym. Okay. Well, I remember my water bottle and I remember my eight notebooks. Like, I don't think that's a typical gym bag for most people. No. I don't think so, but it shows a lot of wisdom because when you get like the blood pumping and your brain is the most uh -huh. active, you're exercising, mm -hmm. you're going to get your best ideas. So you, Oh yeah. I mean, there's, there's a ton about the connection between, um, creativity, you know, and, and movement and stuff. So I'm, yeah. I'm all for that. Awesome. <laughs> I just had to laugh. So anyway, what about, um, real quick before we wrap up, what are just tips if, if you haven't prayer journaled ever, or if maybe it just sounds a little weird or you don't even know where to get started, what are some tips that we can leave people with? I think especially if you've never prayer journaled before, you might be tempted not to start or to only write perfectly, you know, like it, mm -hmm. that scary mm -hmm. blank sheet, that new journal, you know, it's, it's scary to start writing in it and be afraid that, oh, I'm going to misspell a word or mm -hmm. maybe cross something out. It's going to be bad. And I don't want to make that first mistake. And I look and it, every single one of my journals, the first page looks so nice and pretty. Isn't and that by true? The end, it's like scrawling and screaming at God. No, <laughs> but no, but it's, it's definitely don't, don't be a perfectionist. Just start, yeah. just jump right in and realize that it's a process and that nobody else is, is going to care what's in there and that, that this is just between you and God. So I'm such a perfectionist that at some points in my journaling, I have made myself deliberately make a mistake on page one just to remind myself that it's okay to do that. <laughs> Yeah. No, it, it breaks the ice and then it makes it, it way easier and the pressure's off and your focus can be less on your handwriting and more yeah. on your conversation with God. Yeah. Pressure's off. Don't self-censor whether you're writing out letters to God or just the list of what you're praying for or somewhere in between. I do a lot of shorthand prayers, you know, so it's almost like, um, almost like it might be if you were like a secretary taking minutes at a meeting, <laughs> you know, it's like now I'm praying about this. So I'll jot down a word or two. And now this, however you do it, um, really it's between you and God. And so there's not a right or wrong way. And so yeah, pressure's off and yeah, don't, don't self-censor because God already knows what's in your mind and he knows what's going to end up on your page. 
And so you don't need to spend a whole lot of time about trying to make sure that it's 100% matched between exactly what you are thinking you want to pray and what shows up in your journal. And I would say also two opposite thoughts. So thought one is if you, if you prefer to type on a computer, give writing longhand a try, at least give it a little bit of a try because it, it, I don't know. It just, it's something we don't do a lot these days in general. And I, I don't know, maybe some people do, but I don't do it a whole lot. And so other than prayer journaling and it's just something that, um, Just give it a try before you decide, oh, I don't want to do a physical prayer journal. But on the other hand, if you've given it a try and you don't like or your, you know, your hand cramps up really bad or you have carpal tunnel or you have, you know, physical reasons why it's not working for you, don't be afraid to do a digital journal, you know, to to do it as long as you're documenting and talking to God. Um, So I don't know. I would say definitely start with trying a physically written journal, but in the end, do what's best for you and what you are going to get the most, um, what's going to enable you to grow, grow closer to God. Cause that's the point. It's not the actual, uh, it's not, it's not the method. It's, it's the, the end to the means, right? Not the means, but the end. Yeah, no, I totally agree that it's worth trying you know, on the computer, worth trying writing it out, worth trying if you want just a whole bunch of ideas. Well, we should change the name to our prayer journal course. We'll just call it, you know, like spaghetti journaling. Then you can just see what sticks, right? I like that. That would be catchy. I think that could could definitely catch (laughs) on. And then we could open up an Italian restaurant and, you know, like pray for people who come in. No. All right. Anyway, let's wrap up. (laughs) If you're interested in our prayer journaling course, which does not have spaghetti in the title, but should, you can go to prayingchristianwomen.com slash journaling. Well, let's just close in prayer and just, um, we just want to ask God to be with you now and just to help you to pick the spaghetti that's right for you off the wall (laughs) and Um, And just to be able to enhance your prayer life with journaling. God, thank you so much that we get to be here and just invite you into our prayer journaling lives. We just ask that any of these things that have been discussed that that would help us as individuals would really stick. God, that we would know um, how to get started. And most of all, just allow us to get to the mindset of just wanting to draw closer to you in in just one, one more way. And we just pray your blessing as we commit to trying to spend a little bit more time with you through prayer journaling. In Jesus' name, amen.